Now, I first got an email from Kale Sampson well more than a year ago, yeah, and I've had several exchanges with him. He's always been so polite, so eloquent, so clear, so respectful, and, and he's one of the most famous uh, hip-hop artists in the world right now, and uh, socially conscious hip-hop. And and uh, he had written a number of songs which he had sent to me and said that I, I had inspired that work. And I'd, I listened to them, and man, he had my work nailed. He had it distilled, but it was my work from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, which is really no longer relevant. I mean, at this point in time, we are not concerned about whether CIA deals drugs. Or we are not concerned about whether the banking system is corrupt. Or we're not concerned about... Those of us here in this audience, a lot of people still who need to be awakened may want to start there, but we don't have the time to lead them around the monopoly board of life through the through the checkered spaces while they roll dice to get it. And I was extremely honored by the things that he said, by the things that he wrote, but I, 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 I just couldn't go back just to get some tribute to myself because what's more important is that uh, the music and the things we talk about on this show are absolutely relevant uh, and uh, bearing down upon the issues which are facing us now. So uh, Kale Sampson, he's a talented hip-hop artist from Toronto. Uh, he's known for his socially conscious and thought-provoking pro lyrics. He challenges mainstream beliefs by presenting complex subject matters in the form of easy-to-understand, really easy-to-understand rap songs. His unique method of social commentary invites listeners to question authority and the very nature of, of accepted truth while expressing an urgency to bring about public awareness and positive change on a global scale. And art is the way. We've talked about that many times, too. That's what Terrence McKenna said. Art is, is, is the avenue which gives revolutionaries the greatest uh, freedom of expression. Uh, with his grassroots background and strong Internet presence, very strong, Kale has accumulated an international following of fans who are rapidly spreading his music across the globe. Uh, he's become really popular on social networking websites as well as alternative media outlets and has recently appeared on RT's Breaking the Set with, with our dear friend Abby Martin. His latest album, entitled The Big Picture, was released a few months ago and has received much critical acclaim. So what what happened with all of this, there was another recent exchange with Kale, and, and, and I, I wrote him a heartfelt explaining, you know, why I, I couldn't go back to songs, even if they were ter tremendous, that... That that, uh, that that talked about stuff that was done five ten years ago because the world is changing that fast time is speeding up, and then he sent me a link to a song, uh, and uh, that that song conscious revolution is is what we're going to do most of this show about because in that one song he has put in lyrics uh, and through his beautiful poetry uh, all of the spiritual and physical truth that I've been trying to teach here for two years in just one song. Kale, welcome to the Lifeboat Hour, man. Hey, thanks so much, Mike. Uh, uh, that was an awesome intro, and it's uh, it's a real pleasure to be here on your show. Uh, like you said, you know, you've been a, a huge source of inspiration for me throughout the years. So it's just uh, really great to be speaking with you finally, and to be connecting with so many like-minded listeners out there right now. All right, well, that's way cool, brother. All right, let's go ahead and play this song because we're going to spend a lot of the show talking about it. The song is Conscious Revolution. It's from your new album. When did you write this, Gail? Um, I wrote this. This was actually the last song that I wrote uh, for my latest album, The Big Picture. Um, it was probably about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I, I just realized that I had pretty much spent the, the bulk of the project talking about a lot of the, the issues that you were talking about, which weren't uh, as relevant to uh, our current times. And uh, so I wrote uh, Conscious Revolution to try and uh, provide a bit of a balance with the rest of the album and to, to try to end it off with, uh, with a positive message that uh, tried to offer solutions and inspiration and hope on uh, more of a spiritual level. You hit it uh, out of the park and, 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 and out of the parking lot. Let's hear Conscious Revolution. Then we're going to come back and talk to it. Here it is by, by Kale Sampson. Go ahead. i 
entire universe is a giant organism Just like a human being, it's alive and living With awareness of itself, everything within it is made up of energy And that's what consciousness is So every single person in existence are expressions of this conscious energy That are different, limited to five senses Only able to perceive a very narrow bandwidth of this reality What you see in the mirror is not actually you It's an illusion of perception that gets you confused Cause what appears to be solid and what atoms make is really 99.99 empty space We're vessels consciousness uses as tools to observe our free will and gather knowledge through And I know this probably sounds esoteric to you But quantum physics has proven that it's actually true We are powerful with unlimited potential when we're in a state of love this revolution we are powerful with unlimited potential when we're in a state of love this revolution, the greatest discovery of planet Earth Is it has a consciousness governed by the universe And it has its own pulse, its own heartbeat That it shares with all biological living things By disseminating down through waves and frequencies Which eventually converge in the brains of human beings And now science has bridged the gap that connects The physical and spiritual at last Everyone has a surrounding field of energy Our hearts generate electrons Magnetically, so the thoughts and emotions we feel within shape the outer physical reality that we're in. This information has been known for ages and was commonly taught by the shamans and sages back in prehistoric ancient civilizations by the Hopi, Apache, and Cherokee natives. And now a new awareness has taken place as more and more people start to awaken. Consciousness is evolving. We need to embrace it. Stay centered in love. There's nothing to be afraid of. We are powerful with unlimited potential when we're in a state of love. This revolution. We are powerful with unlimited potential when we're in a state of love. This revolution throughout our whole lives we've been made to believe that we're just little people who are powerless and weak that we're insignificant in the higher scheme of things but it's a lie the opposite is reality so don't believe the false history we've been taught it's time to talk to our neighbors and turn the television off take responsibility for your actions and thoughts and realize the true potential that you've got because once you understand the way that energy works you'll feel connected to each other the ramp the earth then you'll listen to your heart when it's speaking to you and start to do the right thing and all that you do our collective consciousness has to decide to be in a state of love and no longer comply so we're fully empowered now step away from the fear and start to lead by example the revolution is here we are powerful with unlimited potential when we're in a state of love this revolution we are powerful with unlimited potential when we're in a state of love a conscious revolution say you better listen now That just gave me goosebumps. I'm still having the goosebumps. Uh, Kale, uh, as I listen to this and, I, and I'm reading the lyrics again, I, I go, well, you didn't just learn this, all of this overnight. There's an incredible amount of, has to be, uh, reading, learning something to give you the understanding of particle physics uh, and everything else that's going on. Uh, when you say that the universe is a giant organism, just like a human being, it's alive and living. With awareness of itself and everything within it, there you 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 drill right to the heart of the work of such giants as Terence McKenna and so many other people out there for for so long. How did you come to learn all of this stuff? Uh, I mean, I've just been researching basically for 
basically as long as I can remember, at least half of my life, uh, I've been. Uh, I remember even uh, when I first uh, watched Collapse. That was definitely a um, a paradigm shift for me. Uh, learning about Graham Hancock, watching his uh, lectures online. Um, there's a fellow in Australia who uh, I've learned a lot uh, of my information from, Max Egan. Just just really accumulating. Uh, information from all different places and just trying to piecing it together like a puzzle myself um, and fitting it all together in a way that I can understand and then trying to communicate it through my music, my medium hip-hop uh, in the best way possible that I can to try to spread it and make it understandable to as many people as possible out there. How old are you, Kale? I'm 35. Wow! Youngster still. Still way a youngster, but you're still out there doing it, man. You uh, you make a lot of appearances. How, how often are you performing live now? How often do you tour? Um, I've kind of cut back on the touring. Uh, I've, I've mostly been doing a lot of interviews uh, recently, and and uh, I, I mean, I try my best to, to tour around, but... Uh, you know, I, I will when I feel like it's the best audience, when it's uh, when it's sort of the the right environment. But uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily feel like I have to be slugging it on the road and traveling around, uh, you know, living out of cars and and hotels if I don't necessarily need to. You know, uh, That's in this the hard day and age, way to do it, brother. That's the hard way. Yeah, I know, and I've, I've done that too. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've sort of been down that road and done that, and uh, you know, now it's just. Uh, with the internet and you know with the revolution that's happening in alternative media with podcasts and, and radio shows like this it's it's not quite as necessary you can get the information uh, and the message which is most important out there through through different means okay when you write in, in, in verse two um, you really have a clear concise grasp I mean I could see Greg Braden or or Michio Kaku or you know so you, I, I could see any of the great uh, scientific minds out there just using verse two as a, as a teaching <laughs> verse to their physics class. Yeah. Uh, well, but, I mean, f go ahead. But I was just going to say, like, uh, you know, briefly from what I know of uh, the work that Greg Braden and others have done, it's uh, you know, it's been proven scientifically that our emotional patterns have uh, vibrations, uh, frequencies to them, which uh, which can direct. Uh, you know that can that affects both our sort of our genetics and our evolution as a whole, and uh, and this is also uh, in accordance with uh, a lot of the the spiritual teachings, the ancient shamanistic traditions that you refer to. Uh, so so what we kind of are seeing now is somewhat of a, a merging, uh, a mutual acknowledgement that's taking place uh, between these two modes of thinking, which have uh, always been kind of arranged by the power structure to be divided and polarized. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, if that's what you mean by the, the, yeah, yeah, the sort of reference on. in verse two, that, would, that that was right on. But but you also were there, uh, doing something that is exceptionally important that I've been trying to do in in uh, in my work, which is you have integrated not only the science but showing where the science correlates, matches, affirms, confirms, validates uh, ancient shamanic teachings and prophecies and all of the. the the teachings of indigenous people that the uh, current culture, the current meme, has tried so hard to wipe out. I mean, I'm grateful, and I'm, I'm sure many uh, indigenous people are, that you, you pay tribute to the Hopi, Apache, Cherokee, the, to the indigenous people. Have you had any exposure to uh, indigenous cultures or ceremony? Um, I have not directly. Uh, just, Good. you know, from... from I, well, I know, I definitely should. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something that I want to do... Uh, uh, I want to immerse myself in more uh, in my life, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, in, in regards to those uh, specific lines, I think it's uh, I think it's obvious that uh, the knowledge that we as human beings uh, and how we're ultimately connected with one another and interconnected with the natural world, the planet, uh, through our conscious energy, it's obviously nothing new. 
uh, and it's been known for eons. And, uh, you know, obviously in the indigenous native peoples all throughout history, you know, they've uh, proven that with their respect for life, their respect for nature, uh, deep understanding of astrological cycles. And, um, you know, that's why it's so important for us to, to protect uh, the, the, the native cultures all around the world. It's important for modern-day people to relearn the, the older ways because that's where the knowledge of the plants um, and, the, and Mother Nature still exists. So, uh, you know, I just believe that that knowledge um, is a vital tool uh, that we can use to reconnect ourselves back to reality. Well, I would, I would kind of liken that to... Uh, pe- people who don't often understand, uh, you know, they they talk about suppressed technologies, and we know what the suppressed technologies are. They're the same technologies our ancestors used for a couple of million years before man became separated from everything else. Uh, as Daniel Quinn put it in, in the book Ishmael, uh, either the earth belongs to you or you belong to the earth. Which is it? And we are living the end result right now of a culture which says that the earth belongs to man and our techno fixes are destroying it much, much, much faster. And that's all we seem to be able to do is to destroy it faster. But in verse 3, you kind of go into those technologies. You're right. Uh, well, you, you write, you know, we have, the, the chorus is we have powerful with unlimited potential. But then you talk about the perception, the hypnosis, uh, the conditioning. Uh, that we've, we've been made to believe that we're just little people who are powerless and weak, that we're insignificant in the higher scheme of things, but it's a lie. The opposite is reality. So don't believe the false history we've been taught. It's time to talk to our neighbors and turn the television off. I love that. Take responsibility yeah. for your actions and thoughts. That's another key line. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, to be in a state of love, which is an energetic vibration, this sums up the whole message of what the truth is that is starting to emerge through the pain uh, that human civilization is going through. Now, I mean, two billion people don't have to debate whether climate change is real. All they have to do is look out the window or walk out the front door. Uh, you had a cold winter up there in Toronto. How is it... Uh, the, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah, no, I was just... Uh, yeah, I mean, the effects of climate change have definitely been very noticeable in Canada. Uh, this winter uh, in Toronto, where I live, it's been the coldest winter here in uh, the past 20 years, and that's according to mainstream, and uh, and really just all across Canada too, like uh, from uh, Winnipeg to St. John's, Newfoundland, which is uh, in the the east there. All these places are experiencing some of the coldest and snowiest winters in decades. So you know, like you said, it's, there's really no point in people arguing about uh, whether or not climate change is real. Um, you know, all you have to do is look out the window to see the, the bizarre weather that's, you know, basically making it impossible for the plants and animals to adapt. And, and uh, you know, people who are disconnected from that consciousness and from the earth, you know, they, they don't realize that uh, without plants and animals, then we can't survive e- either. So, so that's why we, we need to start working with nature harmoniously and just really respecting Mother Earth. Well, I can say, brother, that you have been paying exceptionally close attention to uh, to what's going on and, and the wisdom and knowledge that's out here. Let me ask you this. Are people paying attention to you? What kind, what demographics, what age group, what kind of responses do you get to your music? Who are you appealing to? Um, you know what? It's been incredible since I released the, the, the Big Picture album in August. Um, it's been really, really humbling, and uh, and just uh, I get emails every single day from people all around the world. It's no specific demographic. It's uh, it, a lot of people who don't listen to hip hop music, uh, believe it or not, who are just uh, with a message and the and the the truth that I'm trying to communicate is resonating in their hearts um, and just transcending uh, beyond you know the the, the labels that. You know the the genres, the, all the different types of division that people would normally, I guess, categorize me in. Um, I, it's it's incredible. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not saying this from an egotistical point of view, but I never, you know, expected that I'd be getting hundreds of thousands of views on my YouTube channel for for videos and songs. Um, you know, especially when I'm operating from a completely independent level, where it's just my wife and I managing the whole operation. <laughs> so it's been very humbling. Um, 
and uh, you know it's just a great thing. And we, you know, it's not really about me. It's about it's about the information and it's about the message. So uh, you know, obviously the message is resonating and it, it's really empowering and, it, and it's really reassuring to me to just continue to keep doing what I'm doing. Speaking of your YouTube channel, take a minute or two and tell everybody who's listening, and there's quite a few tonight. Uh, everybody who's listening, how they can find you. You got a website, you got a YouTube channel. Tell everybody uh, all about how to find you and tell us what you're up to next. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can find out more about me or check out my music uh, by going probably to my main website, which is klsanson.com. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's It's got a strange moniker, 94TO96. 94TO96. Uh, that was a song I wrote uh, back in the day. Uh, back in the day. But anyway, that's the YouTube channel. And feel free to add me on Twitter, add me on Facebook. Uh, if you want to grab the new album, The Big Picture, it's available on iTunes. And um, it, we uh, we also have a new music video that we just released called The Truth Is, um, which my wife, uh, Jamie, actually filmed and directed in both Toronto and in Washington, D.C., when we went down there to film uh, Breaking the Set with Abby. Yep. Uh, so just look out for that on YouTube. Look out for more videos, more shows, and more coverage related to uh, the Big Picture album. Now, you and Abby both, uh, you know, I, I happen to be fans of both of you, and, and uh, Abby and I are pretty good friends, I think. And, uh, and uh, she's an artist, and you're an artist. And we have been hearing a message, which I've been underscoring more and more. It's why I make this a nightclub at the end of the world. I mix the music with the show because it adds different energies to it. Um, but it's getting really clear that art is the most effective weapon that revolutionaries have right now. Uh, it, it, it penetrates consciousness. It lives kind of in between the ones and zeros of Cartesian tyranny. It, it can't be... <laughs> The ones and zeros of Cartesian tyranny can't measure heart and soul, but music and art do. Um, That's right. I'm, and I'm, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just so terribly aware of the power of this. Are you, so in addition to the good response, are you, are, are you getting a sense that, as I am, that, that a consciousness shift is really underway? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that there's a, a mass awakening uh, and most definitely a, a conscious revolution, like my song says, you know, that's happening all around the world right now. And, uh, you know, when I talk about uh, revolution, conscious revolution, I'm talking about a revolution of thought, uh, because, you know, revolution starts from within, within our minds, within our hearts, and I think that uh, that's what we're experiencing right now is a revolution of love, and uh, it's pretty blatantly obvious right now to me. Thank you. Uh, Thank and you. you know, again, I'm fortunate because I am I have put myself out there, and uh, you know, I've been fortunate to to have my my message resonate with a lot of people. So I am fortunate to to be getting a lot of uh, positive feedback. But without a doubt, it is uh, truly inspiring and amazing to to be a part of this and to be an active agent within it and uh, just watching it continue to to expand it's a beautiful thing you put a caveat in the song that i thought was a, a very important and boy it's over the last four or five months as i've gone through some major changes in my life uh, i have been practicing it and i have noticed that it is you you caution people to pay attention to what you think and what you say and i kind of opened the show with that thought which is so important to watch the words the energy that comes out of your mouth but not only what goes through your mind and anybody who's walked a spiritual path for 30 seconds understands what the committee is it's all those voices from radio kfuk uh that come in and, and uh, slam all this negative stuff into your head uh tell us about uh, about how you watch your thoughts and what you meant in in the uh, in the caveat you, you you gave to the listeners in the song is there a specific line that you're referring to but well, uh, I, I mean yeah you you said uh, okay you said and start to uh, like, oh, wait a minute, but the energy works you feel connected uh, okay uh, so don't believe the false history we've been taught it's time to talk to our neighbors turn the television off take responsibility for your actions and thoughts uh, yeah it's I'm, the thoughts and and uh, sometimes those are hard to deal with and they really sneak up on you the uh, culture is very insidious and the more you're exposed to a television, I find I can no longer even be around a, a, a television set that's on. I just, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's horrible. 
Uh, yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. And, yeah, I mean, our thoughts and our intentions and uh, our, our words are extremely powerful. And, um, you know, uh, basically, you know, it's, it all generates in our hearts. And, and really, um, that's what controls everything because the heart is, is literally an energy generator that, that charges the, the field around us through our thoughts and through our feelings. And so, so every moment of our lives, we're, we're communicating with this energy field and, and shaping and molding and creating our physical reality with, uh, with our thoughts and, and with the conscious energy that we're, we are releasing through them, through our words and through everything that we do, our actions, our intentions. So with that comes a huge responsibility when you are conscious and aware of that power to, you know, really project um, from your heart, project uh, a love-based center, empathy and uh, sincerity and genuineness. Oh. Uh, that answers Authenticity. You nailed it on the head. I'm just sitting here with the biggest grin on my face. I wish you could see me right now. I'm just nodding my head to everything you're saying. You are such a tremendous affirmation just by your being and your breathing and, and, and the tremendous art that you share with us. Uh, of of so many things that are so desperately needed right now, and there are many of us out here, men and women both, uh, women and men both, I should say, uh, who 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 find ourselves after sometimes a long walk and sometimes a shorter walk, uh, being on the forefront like riding a surfboard on the wave of this, and it is kind of exhilarating at times. I would like to. Uh, I think what I want to do is I'm going to change up just a little bit. I. I, I I want to play a song by you, because your songs are so good, uh, that shows people reacting to you, that shows, that actually demonstrates that we're not mentally masturbating here, imagining the stuff in our head and nobody's paying attention. After that... No, we're out there in the physical world, uh, you know, we're doing this for real. Yeah, man, you certainly are, and this next song I'm, I'm, I'm going to play demonstrates that. After that, I think I'd like to open up the lines for calls. So if you'd like to, talk, to ask a Kale a question or make a comment, the number to call is 1-888-874-4888, 1-888-874-4888. But I, I want to play this song called Reach Up by you, and you did this a cappella at Occupy Toronto. Boy, that was back in the day. That was uh, 2011, seems like about a century ago now. Uh, but you had an amazing crowd response on this. I want to play this song, and then you can tell us about how the reaction was to that. Let's hear Reach Up, and then we'll take your calls. Reach Up by Kale Sampson. Here we go. Everybody feeling the positive energy in this place? Yeah! yeah. My name is Kale Sampson. I'm a socially conscious hip-hop artist from Toronto, and I really had to share something with you guys right now. This is a, a track called Reach Up, and it goes like this. The top 1% of the population owns 40% of the wealth. Over 30,000 children die every day in poverty from lack of health. This wealth gap keeps increasing between rich and poor. There's more slavery now than ever before. Although democracy is supposed to be equal, government is controlled by a small group of people. Bankers, bankers and corporations are in charge. They finance presidents who then help them make laws. All the candidates are really pre-selected, so it doesn't matter which party ends up elected. Central banks control the money supply. The crazy thing is that they're all privatized. Every dollar that's printed and never exists is a loan that we need to pay back with interest. The fractional reserve system's a scam that keeps the whole nation in debt, and that's the plan. This is happening across the whole entire world. It only leads to global empire. The U.S. uses the World Bank and IMF to pay off politicians and put countries in debt. That debt's so big they can never repay, so they're forced to sell all the resources as a trade at the end of the day. It's all nothing more than economic bribery and extortion. So more and more people are becoming desperate. Potential terrorists that can be arrested. And your home can be searched now without a warrant. You can be detained indefinitely and tortured. These laws are designed to destroy our liberties. So when we fight back, it limits our abilities. We got one more here. 
We live in a system based on profit regardless of what the environmental cost is. So in this society, monetary gain always comes first before people's well-being. Now think about the theory of supply and demand. Everything is worth more the less of it that's on hand. So if the goal is to make money by any means, it makes sense to deny people of what they need. In, re in reality, energy is abundant. There's no need for anyone to die of hunger. Everyone on earth could be housed if we wanted, but technology that could help isn't funded. Instead, instead businesses that control market share purposely keep all our resources scarce, so people are forced to fight, cheat, and lie because there's not enough money for us all to survive. We greed and corruption is rewarded. It means our whole value system is distorted. We need to think critically, change our perception. Almost everything we've been told is a deception. For centuries, things like race and religion have been used to keep us focused on division. We've been conditioned to see ourselves as different from everything else, and that's the point we're missing. Humans are trained to look at disparities that are trivial compared to our similarities, and not just with people. We're talking about completely detaching from nature itself. Our planet's a system. Our planet's a system that's interconnected. Everything we do, something else is affected. Without animals, elements, or plants, we can't survive on this earth. Humans have no chance. So look at everything as an extension of you. Atomically, we're all the same. It's just a different worldview. And the faster this realization spreads, the better off the world will be moving ahead. Thank you. Much love to all you guys. This is a bottom-up movement. We're only going to continue to grow and expand. Let's stay ahead and let's keep fighting. Peace, love, respect to all you guys. grin on my face just keeps getting bigger and bigger. That was uh, Occupy Toronto in, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, 2011, Kale. Uh, and yeah. how, how, how many people were there? Uh, well, that was the, the very first day of, uh, of the Occupy movement uh, in Occupy Toronto. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a magical moment. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to get on the mic and, and speak to the people. And there was, you know, thousands of uh, I, I, I can't tell you, but you know, in the thousands, uh, it, it was rammed full of uh, consciousness, and it was a, a beautiful, a beautiful moment right there. Well, and, I would... uh, that's kind of what started uh, started off a lot of these things. And you know, it's kind of ironic because um, I mentioned that uh, "Conscious Revolution" was the the last song that I wrote on my album, and that song "Reach Up," uh, the lyrics to that, that was the the first track that I wrote on my album. Uh, and I think when you listen to the, the big picture as a whole, you kind of witness the, the evolution and the, the transition of thought that I went through during the, the process of creating it. And I, I basically kind of realized that the, the only way that we're going to change a lot of the, those issues that I talk about and reach up is if we change our value system and uh, our consciousness as a whole from the root level. And and out of necessity as well, which is what events seem to be driving us towards as climate chaos, uh, climate collapse, uh, and uh, the dangers of Fukushima uh, bear down on us along with the nuclear leaks at the WIP facility in Carlsbad, New Mexico, at Hanford, and so many plants that are that are leaking, shutting down, scramming right now. We are in a place where Cartesian Newtonian reality is is not just failing us, it is proving itself to be utterly false. And I think that's the, the open door through which we can walk, because uh, there was a line from the movie uh, JFK where uh, the Fletcher Prouty character, uh, Mr. X, said people are fundamentally suckers for the truth, and we know it when <laughs> we hear it, and, uh, and we respond to it. Uh, don't, don't have any callers yet. There may be uh, some issues with the phone lines. One eight 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 seven four four eight eight eight. Try in if if you want to talk to Kale or me. Uh, but as as I look at all of this, uh, I, I, I'm real curious as to where your urges are to go next. More songs, more albums, more performances. Any subject matter you're working to develop? Are you working on anything new? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just continuing to do what I'm doing, uh, doing interviews, uh, 
everything, you know. There's going to be more shows. There's there's uh, more music. I'm working on, you know, more more stuff related in the in the conscious conscious revolution uh, song like era uh, area. Sorry, uh, you know, really just stuff that that is more. Uh, focusing right now on, on the difference between uh, love and fear, um, you know, because really I see that as the, as the, the root issue that, that we fundamentally have to uh, resonate into, into the, the collective consciousness, because there's really just love and there's fear, and, and both of these emotions create uh, energy fields and in individuals, in nations, and in the world as a whole. And the, the establishment knows that if they can control the emotional state of the people by keeping us in a separated, divided, collective mind state, uh, then they can basically control the population. So that's, uh, that's what we need to do. We need to stop being afraid. That's kind of the message that I'm putting forth in my upcoming music. We need to start understanding what's going on. We need to start consciously choosing love over fear because that's where our potential becomes unlimited and really just reality can literally be anything that we want. Uh, we have the ability to create a love-based reality. If we can center ourselves in a state of love, we will generate that type of energy and the collective consciousness will change for the better. It's really that simple. So that's really just the message and the urgency uh, that I'm trying to communicate in, in everything that I do, in the way that I live my life, in every conversation I have, not just my music, um, in everything. Have you ever done any, like, multimedia where you work with a visual artist or a graphic artist or dancers or anything like that? Um, to be honest with you, my artwork has been pretty, uh, pretty um, individualized. I mean, basically... Uh, my wife, uh, Jamie, and I uh, basically run the, the entire operation. Um, I want to give her a shout-out. She's uh, definitely a huge uh, inspiration to me. I wouldn't be here without her. Uh, but she is also a tremendous artist. Um, she, uh, I collaborate with her. We, we organize all of my shows together. Uh, she shoots the music videos um, and it's a it's a beautiful team operation. I, I have one other uh, film director that I work with uh, called Jay Fox. Uh, he run, has a company called Lenovo Povre. Um, but really, it, it's just my wife and I uh, doing all this. Uh, we're both artists, and we're both uh, devoted to uh, getting this information and this message out there uh, by whatever means possible. And uh, we just work together as a team. It just feels so natural. And there is something to be said about having kind of complete control over sure. your own product because at the end of the day, you know, you get to keep 100% of the profits that you do earn, even though it's not really about that. But you get to uh, keep creative control. You get to maintain your artistic integrity, which is really what it's all about in the end. So, you know, we've got a, a great thing going right now. I'm obviously open to collaborating with other like-minded uh, artists and difference makers, but uh, but as of right now, it's uh, you know it's basically just a, a small team uh, who I trust and who really understand my vision. That's a really really honest answer. But let me let me confess something. I was having a craving, and I mean a craving, as 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 I was listening to Reach Up just now, to see it done like a rock opera, to see it done with dancers and visual art on the stage, like a play. You know uh, where where many other artistic mediums could be combined. I'm not telling you what to do, but that, that, that yeah, yeah. raving I had, but that would only make it that much more powerful, I think. But but you hey, are you know so right. If, if other people out there are other artists, uh, other uh, people who use creative mediums to uh, express truth are inspired by my work and feel compelled to, to use it uh, as inspiration for their own uh, work, then I am totally open for that. Go right ahead uh, as, you know, as long as you, you feel uh, that uh, you feel moved by, by the heartbeat, by the intention, and it inspires uh, other artists to, to work with it, then you know, I'm, I'm all for that. Because you know? it's sure. all about getting the information and the message and, the, and the raising the level of consciousness. Well, that seems to be what it's about, and, and, and I guess if you look at it from another perspective, uh, a guy like me who staked out his uh, staked himself out a long time ago and held a patch of ground, but you're holding a patch of ground too. 
we can get the sense. Well, let me ask you: if you do get the sense that all you got to do is hold the ground, and 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 the consciousness will come to you. It's starting to feel that way. I mean, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I mean, even when I was little, uh, you know, I was all, I always kind of felt like uh, a little bit awake. I was always kind of aware of the consciousness within and around me. And, uh, you know, I even remember at, a, at an early age being able to pick up on people's energy, their vibrations, mm-hmm. and, uh, and understand that I had the ability to manifest my own reality in the physical world through my thoughts and my intentions and the power of my affirmations, which I do a lot uh, verbally and visually. Uh, and, you know, I was able to do that in sports and in my interactions with people. So, you know, it's just always been kind of a little bit natural to me, and, and uh, it, it just manifests, and, and um, synchronicity is a, a huge theme throughout my life. I mean, you know, even here we are having this conversation with you. I, I remember, um, you know, reaching out to you a long time ago, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, here we are. So, yeah, it's, it's all about just standing your ground and, and believing in this, it, it, it's it, you don't need to believe it if you can feel it, and I definitely oh, feel say that again. Know that. That, say that again. You don't need to believe it if you can feel it, right? That was That's right. That was awesome. Um, and I feel it. I definitely feel it. I know it. I can tell you feel. I I can tell I do. We do have a caller. Amy is on the line from Oklahoma. Amy, are you there? Yes. Go ahead, Amy. Hi, Amy. Well, I kind of had a question specifically. Um, about like-minded people, because where I'm at, I don't really have a lot of them, and I'm getting ready to make a move in May, and I'm going out west to visit family in Ventura, and I was thinking about making a move to find some like-minded people, to be part of a community that's willing to work towards the same goals. Yeah, I mean... uh... I think that that's a great thing to do, Amy. I mean, I'd, obviously, I don't know your life situation right now, but one thing I do know is that, uh, you know, even uh, not to relate it back to myself, but one thing that I've always tried to do is uh, not surround myself with uh, other people who, uh, you know, drain your energy and who, you know, kind of give you uh, a negative feeling that uh, sinks into yourself when you leave their company um, you know yeah, I'm, well, all f- I'm, I'm all for just uh, empower- putting yourself in situations that empower yourself and allow you to be the, the best person and, and feel the best about yourself and your, your life as, as, as you should be able to well thank you you know the situation I'm in right now is I, I keep to myself because of my surroundings are not very conducive to my health let's just put it that way right now and okay. I, I was going to be leaving in July. I'd made plans, but I'm moving them up a bit because the neighborhood is just really not that good when you have, well, it, the neighborhood's not that good. And I don't really associate with anybody because of that, except my uh, a downstairs neighbor. And I, I want to head out and find a place where I can, if not put down roots, at least make a contribution somehow there are there are amy other ways uh, to do this and other channels through which you can approach this to find like-minded people anything you do now to hook up with permaculture uh wherever you happen to be uh, uh will automatically introduce you into people who are almost automatically like-minded permaculture has to do with a living human relationship with the plants, the animals, in the environment. In other words, if you look for uh, activities like permaculture or Transition U.S. Uh, or the Transition Movement, which is international, if you uh, look for a- anything that's talking about sustainability, you will be led, and if you do a little jump into some of those rabbit holes, you're going to be led to a place where one day you're going to plop out somewhere and you're going to find yourself surrounded by like-minded people, as I did last night here in Sebastopol, and you become aware that, oh, my God, okay, well, there's a little pocket that I was cut, caught in. Often many people are caught there with members of their own family or, or people they're married to, uh, which makes it difficult. But 
um, uh, we are not as imprisoned as we think, and if you do a little scratching, I think you, you will easily be led uh, to, uh, to meeting kindred spirits, and boy, do we need that. Boy, do we need that. Thank you. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Um, we're down to, to about the last three. Boy, that hour went by fast. Uh, I, could talk, <laughs> I could talk to Kale for a long damn time. We're going to have to have you back on the show. In the last uh, couple of minutes that we have here, Kale Sampson, uh, first of all, let me just salute you for an, an amazing body of work. And let me thank you again for all the songs in which I so clearly heard the influence of my three decades of work, two books, a couple of movies, and all the other stuff that I did. And, and I do want to thank you for honoring me that way because the the big gratification when when I'm in Native American or in indigenous ceremonies there and and you if you saw the movie avatar you understand this there is something empowering about being seen or about being heard uh and kev you have given me uh great comfort in in letting me know that i have been heard uh and you've moved the ball further down the field um and it's it, you know it's 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 just a great hope and and, and it is my belief tonight I'm, I'm for some reason i'm strangely optimistic tonight that this snowball is getting bigger as we roll downhill. Um, uh, Kale, I'm just going to throw it open. We, we've got like two minutes left uh, before I have to start signing out. Uh, you, you take the last two minutes and you go wherever you want to, brother. All right, well, right back at you, brother, um, about all those kind words, you know. Um, and I just want to, you know, just maybe give some some words to to everybody out there, all the listeners. Um, all of the like-minded people out there, like Amy said, uh, you know, I just want to thank everyone for, for listening and for showing your support. And I just want to encourage everyone out there to shed yourself of fear, to not be afraid to stand up, never be afraid to speak out, and to just be the change that we want to see in the world. And to find your voice, find whatever creative medium speaks most to you in order to express yourself. Because at the end of the day, we're really um, in the midst of an amazing opportunity right now uh, to make the world a better place. And I have a lot of confidence that we're moving in the right direction. Um, but it's definitely going to require each and every one of us to become active participants, to be empathetic, to be courageous, to lead by example. Um, by just doing the right thing and everything that we do and choosing love over fear in all of our hearts. Kale Sampson, human consciousness is, uh, is getting to be a much better place because you're in it, because there are so many heroes, heroes, heroines. Uh, there are so many souls emerging now, carrying a message. And I think I just heard you say, too, that even if people didn't think they were art art artistically inclined or may have been shut down, they should knock on that door and uh, try to be a little experimental. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that artists and musicians have a tremendous opportunity right now because there's no denying that music and art, as you said earlier, has a tremendous ability to uh, influence uh, our culture and to uh, inspire people. It doesn't always have to be just entertaining. It can be inspirational. It can be educational as well. And, uh, you know, I just think with, with great art comes the possibility for great change and great change of human consciousness. And I think that music and art can be you know, it, we all have that creativity inside of ourselves, and, and, you know, we've just been sort of conditioned and trained to believe that it's not there. We've been, you know, like, like I referred to in my song, you know, we've been told that, there, that we're just these sort of um, weak little people who are incapable of making a difference, but that's actually not true. It's the complete and polar opposite. So, you know, like I said, I just encourage everyone to find the creativity within and never Gail? be afraid to express yourself. Yeah, we are out of time, my friend, my brother. Thank you so much for joining us on the Lifeboat Hour. The podcast will be available on all week break a leg and, and and let me make a promise someday i'm going to hug you in the flesh because i really want to do that kale kale sampson thank you so much thank you mike this is mike rupert tracker of truth back with you next week with richard heinberg and some great new metaphysical stuff and uh, spiritual stuff that's been turning up keep keep the fires burning we ain't done yet and there is a new sun coming i'll see you next week tonight <laughs>